Hi, today's recipe is coming from the beautiful island of Madeira, Portugal, specifically an area called Cajal de Freitas, which means literally Corral of the Nuns. It's also known as Valley of the Nuns. The way this town got its name was because in 1566, some pirates invaded the island and there were nuns from the convent of Santa Clara in Funchal. These nuns sought refuge in the interior of the island. It's really hard to get to. It's deep in a valley right in the middle. I believe it's the cauldron of the volcano. And they settled there and they developed a lot of recipes there. And one of the most famous ingredients to that area are chestnuts. There's even in November every year a chestnut festival where you could go there and get chestnut bread, chestnut cake, chestnut cookies, chestnut alcohol. They even make chestnut soup. So it's a huge festival to check out that time of the year. And if you're not there that time of the year, it's still just beautiful. There's some great hiking there. So definitely worth a visit. But until you get there, we'll start with this recipe. Chestnuts are known to be harvested around November. They should have a solid feel to them. They shouldn't rattle in there. If they're rattling, that means they're dried out and maybe from last year. So it is a product you want to get fresh every year. All right, to begin with, we want to score the top of our chestnuts. So I have one pound of chestnuts. And what you want to do is just put like a little X mark on top of each chestnut. And what that does is, you know, these are sealed pretty tight around the shell. So instead of exploding in your oven with the steam pressure, it gives somewhere for the, for the shell to split open. It doesn't have to be a big cut. You could use a serrated knife or a sharp paring knife. Sometimes people boil them. Sometimes they just roast them. I, I kind of do a combo where I'll put a little bit of water in a pan. So this is about a, a cup of water. I'm going to throw it in a 375 degree oven, about 190 degrees Celsius and just let them roast for about 15 to 20 minutes. While your chestnuts are roasting, we're gonna separate seven eggs. All right, the next process is to whip up the egg whites to make a meringue. Anytime you're whipping up egg whites for a meringue, you wanna make sure everything's extremely clean. No oil residue from whatever you were cooking before. No egg yolk because fat around the protein from egg whites will keep it from forming a firm meringue. The other thing that's really helpful is a little bit of acidity helps to stabilize the meringue. So about a quarter teaspoon of lemon juice. You even could put some like distilled white wine vinegar because you know a quarter teaspoon, you're not gonna taste it. The other thing they use is cream of tartar. So like a quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar will work also. So put that in there, put in my seven egg whites and let it go at full speed. You can see it's been about two minutes and that's about all you need for a stiff meringue. It should hold up in a spoon just without flopping over. It could go a little more. That's probably like a soft peak. Probably could go another 30 seconds or so. Okay, our meringue is done. We'll put this in a bowl and put it in the refrigerator. See how it's nice and stiff there? That's kind of what you're looking for. I'll keep the meringue in the refrigerator until we're ready to use it. Okay, now for this next step, you don't even have to clean the bowl because it will not affect the egg yolks. So we'll put in the seven egg yolks one cup of granulated sugar, four tablespoons of butter, one teaspoon of vanilla, and a half teaspoon of granulated salt. Now we'll just cream this all together. Let this cream together for about five minutes at medium speed. If you were doing it by hand, it'll probably take about 10 minutes and you're just looking for a smooth consistency. All right. These have been in the oven for about 20 minutes. You can see where I put the slits in, it's starting to peel back. These are too hot to handle right now. I'll let them cool off for about 10 minutes. So usually what I do here is I'll cover them with plastic wrap. If you have something that makes a pretty good seal, like another pan that's just slightly bigger, you could do that. It just kind of lets them steam and soften up the shell a little bit to make it a little bit easier to peel. So we'll let that cool off for about 10 minutes, then peel them. Peel them. Some are always easier to peel than others. Even sometimes I feel like you gotta 
get a knife and cut them in half if they're stubborn getting out. All right, the next step in the process is to puree the meat of the chestnuts. So I'll put these in the food processor. If you don't have a food processor, it's a little more difficult, but you could spend like 10 minutes just chopping it up really fine. If you don't have a food processor also, you might want to, instead of roasting the chestnuts like I did, boil them for 25 minutes, and that way the meat will be a little softer. One reason I don't do that, usually whenever I think of boiling something, I think I'm extracting flavor out of the chestnut into the water. But if you don't have a food processor, it's probably a good way to go to make sure the meat is even softer. That way it will be easier getting it to be a puree with something like a potato masher. <laughs> looking good. It's almost starting to, like I could squeeze it into a ball and it's really mealy. You can see it's almost like the consistency of like a coarse cornmeal. Okay, the next step we're going to butter our mold. You also want to preheat your oven to 320 degrees Fahrenheit or 160 degrees Celsius. You're going to cook it for about 30 to 45 minutes. And I'm using a 9 inch spring form pan, but you could use any type of cake pan will work. So I'm using about probably a tablespoon and a half butter on here. Okay, we have all our ingredients ready. The only thing I haven't put in yet is the two teaspoons of baking powder. I put the baking powder in at the end because as soon as baking powder hits moisture, it'll start to react. And remember, baking powder is baking soda with a dry acid. So as soon as it hits moisture, it starts to release carbon dioxide. And the reason I use this sieve like this is just to distribute it evenly so you don't get any clumps. Okay, now I'll mix in the chestnuts into the egg yolk sugar mixture. I mix in the chestnuts first because once you start incorporating your egg whites, you want to be kind of gentle with it, not to release too much air from the egg whites. So just incorporate your nuts into this egg yolk sugar mixture well. You do want to have your oven ready to go because as soon as this is combined, you want to throw it in the oven. The egg whites, you just want to combine it until it's incorporated. You don't want to over mix it. So like right now I could see big chunks of egg whites still like half inch thick. As soon as it's incorporated, like maybe the most I could see is like an eighth of an inch or just little specks of egg white and it'll be ready to go. Put that in. Just a gentle shake and right into the oven. If you want to check out another dessert that's really popular around fall time in Madeira, check out my recipe for boule de mel. It's probably the most famous cake in Madeira. It shouldn't shake at all in the middle, which it's not. Feels a little firm on the sides. Okay, I cooked this for about 40 minutes and it could vary depending on your oven so I'll let it cool down a little bit probably for at least 15 minutes before trying to unmold it and we'll get to it but it smells really good. They really have to invent smell vision because uh, it would really uh, help out a lot of cooking YouTube channels. But Alright the chestnut cake has been cooling off for about 20 minutes. I'll just go around with a knife to be sure it's not sticking anywhere. If you didn't have a springform pan, you would just want to go with the knife, flip it over onto a plate and tap it. But that is it. It looks really, it smells just incredible. And sometimes it's good to go on the bottom. Just make sure it's not sticking. Oh, can't wait to dig in. There you go, delicious chestnut cake from Cujal de Schwedes in Portugal, Madeira Island. Great autumn treat. Thanks for joining me. Now go cook with someone you love.